Well, good afternoon, everyone. How are you? Uh, it's good to see you all here again. As you know, my name is Corey Honey. I'm the sheriff of Butte County. Uh, first off, I want to reiterate to everyone that you know, this is an ongoing situation. And yesterday, we lifted the immediate evacuation order and replaced it with an evacuation warning. It's important to remember that this is still an emergency situation. The risk level was reduced to the point where I felt we could allow people back into the area to resume the activities of their day-to-day -day lives. However, they have to maintain vigilance. They need to pay attention. I will keep going back to, uh, if they haven't already done so, I want them to go to our, our website, bucountysheriffs.com website, uh, and sign up for our mass notification system so that we can push information out to them as needed. In addition to that, it's important for people to be prepared. Uh, this is an opportunity for them to get things together so that if the risk level increases and there is a need for us to issue an evacuation order, they'll have the things they need and they'll be able to do that quickly and efficiently. I think it's also important for people to uh, start thinking about or planning where they might go and how they might get there so that we can have uh, avoid some confusion and perhaps uh, make it go even orderly. Uh, I'll tell you that that was an incredibly chaotic situation and I was aware of it and I've talked a lot about how heavy that weighed on my mind and how concerned I was for all of the people who were displaced. Uh, but despite how chaotic that was, I'm really, I'm really proud and thankful of the citizens of Butte County, and I know that my counterparts in other counties would probably share this sentiment. Uh, we were able to do that pretty quickly and given the gravity of the situation without any major incidents, the next thing I would like to do is really thank our state and other local law enforcement, public safety, fire service uh, providers. Uh, when this happened, we received overwhelming support from the state, uh, from uh, jurisdictions from throughout the, the of California, and we are continuing to receive that support. We will be uh, in the starting this afternoon. Uh, taking the lessons that we learned from this last experience and incorporating them into our contingency planning. Uh, and that will include also having resources and assets staged and ready in the event that the threat increase, increases and we need to, to lift that. As part of that, uh, we have, um, I'm very, very thankful and very pleased uh, that the uh, uh, governor's office has committed uh, some National Guard troops to us. Uh, we have about 150 of them coming into the region. Uh, they'll be staying here uh, and they will be available uh, for us to use in whatever capacity we see fit. Uh, and it's part of that ongoing effort to support uh, this situation because as I said, although we've lifted the immediate evacuation order, this is still uh, an emergency situation and we've got to pay attention and have uh, the resources on hand to deal with it. Thank you. Good afternoon. Again, Bill Croyle with the Acting Director of the California Department of Water Resources. Um, so I want to start again with uh, expressing our appreciation uh, and, and, and the difficulty of the process this community has gone through. So a number of communities reacted based on the information that we provided through the sheriff and his emergency management team. Um, that was an important part of how we min minimize the risk to the public. Um, that's why we do our emergency planning, why we have emergency action plans, and that plan was put in place and the community responded. And so um, again, the Department of Water Resources and I thank our state agency and federal agency partners um, want to thank and appreciate the effort 
um, that the community has gone through, but also we completely understand the difficulty in what that's put this community in. The efforts that we'll be working together uh, with the sheriff um, and other emergency management partners at the state and federal level will reinforce um, kind of the activities, the good actions that this community has take based on the emergency planning, the communication, uh, and the response to these kinds of situations. As the sheriff indicated, uh, we still are working through a very difficult situation at the dam. The dam structure is safe. Uh, we are working on those areas that have been challenged by um, this, the loss of a portion of the spillway. The spillway is, has been stable for a number of days now. It's stable at this 100,000 cubic feet per second that we're releasing now. Uh, we want to keep that uh, rate up as we continue to move more water out of the reservoir to be able to absorb some of the wet weather that we're experiencing apparently right at this moment and then into the future days and weeks. That's an important part of how we manage the reservoirs in general. In this case, it's a little bit more challenging because of the condition of our spillway. Um, I can't believe how much work that our construction crews, our technical specialists, our design engineers, and those other uh, supporting um, functions, what they've done in the last couple days to move material into the area below the emergency spillway, okay? So that work is progressing. That work will continue as long as those, uh, both the ground and the air condition, or air, um, the wind is, allows helicopter work. We're gonna stay on that and continue to provide that corrective action and then that preventive measure uh, in place to armor up that, that particular area. Um, we've taken almost 20 feet of the reservoir water surfaces out of the reservoir, which poses far less risk to all of the infrastructure that we have here. But as I've indicated um, before, a lot of water um, is still up within the watershed. And again, we're monitoring and evaluating that on a continuous basis to see how that, uh, when that runoff comes, uh, we understand how much and when that'll come and then how we manage that at the reservoir. Um, just um, I, as I was walking in, I was handed our latest model runs here for the next couple small storms. These are fairly small storms, especially compared to what we saw before. And when I say that, we're, you know, those are modeled based on the expected or forecast sn uh, snow line, which is how much rain or snow we'll get. And so with the, with the high rate of uh, release we have them from the reservoir right now, which is 100,000 CFS, we actually won't see or shouldn't see a bump in the reservoir, okay? So that means even though we have water coming in right now about 20,000 CFS and we're removing 80 or 100,000 CFS, in other words, that the difference is 80,000 CFS. So we're moving more water out so if we get additional water in with this reservoir, say another 20,000 based on the forecast that we have, now it's a total of 40. So that means we're still removing more water from the reservoir than we would receive by the storm event coming in here in the next day or so. That allows us to continue to prepare for future wet weather and runoff um, where, we, where we might see these higher flows um, say much higher, even above 100,000, where again, that makes that the reservoir be able to absorb that and really not pose an additional threat um, to overtopping or exceeding the ability of the spillway to uh, release that water. Um, I think that's an important part. So again, we're making great progress on the, on the construction. Um, we will continue those activities as it relates to um, providing that protective measure as long as, again, the ground conditions support the truck traffic and the air um, condition, the wind conditions allow for um, air operations with the helicopters. Uh, right now we have 109, or sorry, 96 construction personnel uh, working around the clock. So again, this is a 24-7 operation. Uh, we have placing 1,200 1, tons of material in the spill, spillway per hour. That's a lot of material moving through the area. So what's the uh, uh, it's, sorry, it's in the 
the area below the emergency spillway. Okay, so that production rate is amazing. And certainly this community has seen an awful lot of trucks, et cetera, go through, a lot of helicopters flying around, and that's an important part of our proactive uh, contingency plans that we're putting in place to um, protect the emergency spillway should we need to use it again. Um, again, as I say, we're gonna continue to uh, keep the, the construction crews in place as long as it's safe to do so. Again, whether it's uh, ground conditions or, or wind conditions. I uh, will continue to manage the reservoir releases. Um, again, as we look at these storms coming in, we're feeling very good about the, uh, the reservoir conditions. And in fact, um, as long as the weather kind of plays uh, somewhere along the uh, way it's forecasted, uh, we're looking actually at reducing the amount of water that's being discharged through the flood control spillway, or, or some are calling the main spillway. Okay, so um, I guess I'm putting out there, don't be surprised if we start backing off of that release. That's an important part, as I've learned in the last couple days, it, that's an important part as how we manage um, how that water is coming from the reservoir and flowing through the, um, the flood control structure and then out of the, uh, down the, the concrete chute that was damaged. And so, again, we're, we're looking at that planned ramp down based on the design criteria for the dam. So the idea there is, of course, we don't want to tear our, our uh, flood control structure up um, any more than it already has been tore up. And so that's a critical part. So I guess I'm saying don't be surprised if you see the department uh, reducing those, those uh, releases. Um, again, we're looking forward uh, based on our forecast and at some point later in the month, we um, may see a little increase in reservoir operations, but again, we have an amazing amount of storage that we continue to improve on on a regular basis. Um, maybe to back up a little bit, for those that are watching reservoir elevations, I've talked a little bit about this number of our, our primary target is 850 uh, feet above mean scene level. Right now we're at 800 and 78 feet as of about 10 o'clock this morning. Um, again, uh, we're dropping somewhere around eight inches in uh, an hour. Um, so that's, again, a, a significant improvement as we move through that process. Um, as I said, we don't anticipate a rise in reservoir elevation here in the coming days, um, but we continue to monitor the weather and forecast that forward into the future. I think that's all I'll cover. Got some time for a couple questions. Yeah, um, why would you uh, consider reducing the, uh, the, the outflows right now from the dam uh, when the water level is going down? Well, we would need, there's a, the way the uh, flood control structure or the main spillway is designed, there's actually a chute that's carved into solid rock that goes out into the reservoir that we can't actually see. And so even though it looks flat out there because of the water surface, under the, under the water, the land form is, goes across and then takes a very dip, deep dip right in front of the flood control structure. Okay, so in other words, it's channelized. And if we continue to exhaust or remove water from the reservoir at this 100,000 cubic feet per second rate, then that can affect the um, rock conditions up front of the flood control structure, and we want we don't want to compromise that at all. So we're there's a design um, model that's when we have the reservoir elevation at certain limits, they have uh, they put limits on how much you can discharge at a certain time, and so again we'll be stepping that down based on the reservoir uh, water surface elevation to make sure that we operate within the design criteria for that flood control structure. Uh, that box right there, right behind you, uh, as my understanding makes sense. Uh, I'm curious, we're watching these, these large bands of, of truck rock being dropped out there. People at home are wondering, is that the fix? Um, is, is that what's going to keep this place safe for the next year, five years, ten years? Or is that more of a short, medium-term solution while you can figure out what to do 
Um, it's a good question. So the the bags that are flying around underneath helicopters, as well as there's some buckets that are flying around, is a combination of materials. The rock is being um, dropped into these erosion areas and filling up that void. And then the buckets carrying grout or, or shotcrete will be placed in there and kind of glue everything together. As well as um, you, there's pumper trucks up there that in, where they can get to, they're using the pumper trucks to inject, inject that grout or that, that cement in and around those rocks to armor that up. So that'll be part of both the short-term and the long-term fix. So you know we're con um, continuing to evaluate that site and improving the conditions on the ground to if we had to use that in the future, we can mitigate um, the threat or reduce the threat of erosion of that material. I think people are looking at that thinking the water could just wash those things away the way it is. Right? Well, well, I mean, that's the amazing with some of the, you know, that's a natural material that we have there. And we're, we're able to look at placing an engineered type structure by a rock um, base and then gluing that together within that erosion uh, void spaces to make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. Over here, Casey. Uh, yeah, can you quantify at all where you expect the, uh, the inflow to be in the future storing this thing? So if it's producing it, So I want to be a little bit cautious about uh, talking about this, right? Because I, I want to remind people Mother Nature's in the room, right? And so we have a forecast. Forecasts are updated four times a day, OK? So every six hours, we're updating this and running our models. So when, I, when, uh, when you ask that question, I want to make sure that you're, there's certain error bars. Um, the other day, the storm parked over us for a little longer, and the, and the, the inflow went up. Um, over the last couple of days, it was warmer, nicer, light winds, and the inflow went down farther. So it goes both ways for us, right? But our models at the moment, based on what was handed to me, we're sitting just about 45,000 CFS coming in. Okay, again, we're releasing 1, 000, or 100,000 CFS, so we have a net game of about 55,000 CFS. And that's why we won't see, we don't expect to see that bump in the reservoir um, surface because we've already made up enough storage space to to manage that uh, inflow and then again it'll start to drop back off after the storm goes by so paul we're seeing this maybe give us a time on here when do you think you'll know you'll have your first test with this next round of storm that can sort of get an assessment of how well things are holding up perhaps normal and even flush what part holding up Th this next storm won't won't pose a threat to the emergency spillway and the work we're doing there, other than slowing us up a little bit, again, subject to those wet conditions or the, the effect on air operations. The, the storm really doesn't have any impact on the emergency, or sorry, the flood control spillway or the main spillway with this inflow. This, re this, hydro this hydrology coming into this reservoir really won't have any impact. Any concern we have uh, related to um, the spillway, the flood control spillway or the main spillway, is really related to its stability. So we're pushing a lot of water for a number of days over the end of that, that structure, and it's holding up very well. But we are monitoring that um, spillway as well as all the other little pieces that we have in place to make sure that if anything's starting to change, we're aware of that right away. You know, we're assessing the truck traffic, um, how they're getting in and out of the facility, the rate uh, and placement of certain kinds of rock and grout. We're monitoring the debris pile at the bottom of the hill. And we're monitoring, again, the structure, the main spillway or the flood control spillway as it moves down the hill. That information is being monitored by um, eyes, humans, cameras and occasionally a drone will fly to get up a little closer information for those areas that is too dangerous to, for us to put people in. All that information comes back to our monitoring team. It's vetted. It's vetted by our safety team. It's brought up to our incident command to make sure that we're all informed. And if there's a changed condition, then we're informed. And if there's a situation that develops, um, we have an opportunity to hit the, you know, the red phone. And so that myself, the sheriff, and our CAL FIRE IC can 
can uh, evaluate that information very quickly and respond appropriately. Right now, I'm, a, I'm really happy with the, the function of the structures we have in place, the production of the mitigation measures that are being in place. Uh, we have additional contingency plans put in, put in place and we're interact or implementing some of those to make sure that, that we're doing everything we can to reduce the threat to the public.